is the Nomadic. This was the tender used in Cherbourg Harbour to ferry first and second class uh, passengers out to the Titanic. It was also used for the Olympic that was built in Belfast as well. And this is the Hamilton Graving Dock. Uh, and th this is all authentic. This uh, strange object right at the end here is a Cassian gate that was put over the end of this dock and it uh, secured the dock so that water could be pumped in. So this is in uh, Nomadic. It was, uh, it was built in Belfast in 1911 um, simply to ferry people out to the Titanic and the Olympic. And this is the last remaining ship of the White Star Line anywhere in existence. So it's, uh, it's something else and this is a, a photograph of it uh, you know as it originally w was being built. Well, this is pure history in front of you folks. And that's a wee bit of detail about the Cassian Dock. I'm just going to do a quick walk around. So this is the Nomadic. And it has been restored and it's been refurbished. And it, uh, you know, millions of pounds were spent on the refurb and restoration of this uh, amazing boat. It's really the, the last link, authentic link that we have to what uh, life was like on the Titanic. And this, this uh, nomadic ha boat has an interesting story uh, in itself, never mind the Titanic connection. So what can I tell you about the Nomadic? Well, it was nicknamed the little sister to the Titanic for obvious reasons. Much smaller. Um, uh, as I said, it was a, it's a former White Star tender. It's launched in 1911 and it took passengers out to the Titanic and the, indeed the Olympic and indeed the Queen Mary and indeed the Queen Elizabeth um, years after that. The vessel itself is the only uh, White Star vessel designed by Thomas Andrews that still survives today. It's 70 metres long that's 230 feet. It's 11 meters wide. It's uh, 1,273 tons. And it was acquired for Belfast in 2006. And an awful lot of work had to be done on this ship to restore it, to refurbish it to what uh, it might have been uh, originally. Millions and millions of pounds were spent on this and the, the upper superstructure of the vessel uh, You know it wasn't there whenever the, it was located in uh, In France in Cherbourg uh, You know it was just a hulk. It was just a, like it was like a barge at uh, um, the superstructure and all the rest of it the stairways the uh, and whatnot um, were just non-existent. It was just flat, uh, but it's it's a, a, a historic relic of uh, you, you know linked to the Titanic, and uh, you know a lot of history is in, in involved with this boat as well. It has five decks, and it could carry uh, at its height 
a thousand passengers and it had 114 of a crew. After the Titanic went down, it was um, it was used in the First World War to ferry troops, and it was uh, used by the French as an auxiliary minesweeper. And it, it, several times it was almost going to be scrapped, uh, and it sort of, sort of had a it was like a cat with nine lives, and it survived. And it's just amazing that it did survive because so many people just wanted it done away with. Um, it's a sister ship, the Traffic, uh, the SS Traffic, um, it, it was scrapped years and years previously. Um, the, this boat also served as a restaurant, would you believe, on the Seine, and it was used to, uh, after that, or no, before that, it was used to ferry escapees from Cherbourg in the Second World War. And as I said before, it, it was a tender for the Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth um, uh, after World War II. It, had, uh, it was given an, uh, another name by the French. It was called the Ingenieur Minard, um, Engineer Min Minard. And it was used, as I say, as a tender for the Titanic because uh, Cherbourg harbour was just too small for the Titanic to get into. Oh, plane taking off up there. And uh, so they had to build this tender. And the, the restoration here is, is absolutely remarkable. The money that was spent and the attention to detail is just uh, remarkable, unbelievable. Five decks and they're almost restored to how they would have looked. Inside, uh, luxury interior, plaster panelling, ornate joinery, brasswork, uh, wooden panelling, uh, uh, and all the rest of it. It's painstaking work, phenomenal work. And uh, whenever they were restoring it, they used old designs and, and uh, archive photographs, uh, five decks. And I'm going in, hopefully, to locate a bell and a lanyard. And and then in, in Clumham, in Clum meter and these were donated by my good YouTube friend uh, Chris Wardlow and his wife and Chris uh, lives in Bampton in Bridlington and he follows my YouTube channel and he has and his wife have kindly sent me gifts and all the rest of it and they're constantly in contact with me so he asked me to uh, come down here and do this wee video and I'm very very happy to oblige And Chris is a member of the Nomadic Preservation Society. So I'm going to go in here and see if I can locate the, um, the display that he donated. An awful lot of the artifacts of the Nomadic uh, were lost or pilfered uh, over the years uh, whenever she was a restaurant or, or a troop ship or, or whatever else. Uh, so the uh, Nomadic Society were happy to receive uh, Chris's gift. And I'm on the, uh, the Nomadic and I'm standing in front of the White Star display cabinet and as I say uh, my friend Chris donated the, this ship's bell to the uh, Nomadic Society and I think this is the lanyard, is this, is this what you would call a lanyard? Uh, and there was something else, a true nominator meter. What do I see? And there should be a plaque about his donation, but I don't see it.
Oh, here we are. The brass bell, lanyard and inclinometer. There we are. We're donated by Christopher M. Wardlow in 2014 and there they are. This is a linen dam dansk, damask tablecloth from the pneumatic. These are all the cruises and cruise ships of the White Star Line. And this is a uh, linoleum tiling from uh, 1911. This is original. This is interesting. In Nomanic's heyday, the crew moved invisibly around the ship through a network of ten small hatches and through the engineering deck. And here's one such hatch. White Star Line passengers were strictly segregated by their ticket class. Second class passengers were not offered the same level of luxury as their first class counterparts. They had no access to a bar, instead they were only, there was only a drinking fountain located outside the tent slabs. Second class passenger stories and who they were. what happened to them. First class passengers. <coughs> I'm just below the stairs here. Is original bench seating, and so is this on the far side. And they're uh, dishing out tea and coffee and tray bakes just at the wee refectory up there. side rooms. Lovely panelling. And this is the gents in the on the pneumatic. Quite opulent marble. Thomas Crapper. The venerable and the crapper toilet there as well. A grapper. This would have been very op opulent. And this uh, picture here says nomadic. A mere glimpse of what lay ahead. The opulence of being referred to as the opulence of the Titanic. So this is the, uh, I think this is the poop deck. And there's all the information about the poop deck. I'm on the upper deck now, with uh, the funnel here. I'm on 
on the uh, bridge deck and the flying bridge deck. And I presume this is where uh, the navigator would have stood, or the captain. Don't know that it would have been in the open air like this. And this is looking down onto the fr front of the boat. This is the forecastle deck just lying in front of me. And these people here in front of me are Spanish from Madrid. All the details about the SS Nomadic Tide of Thousand, modelled by Robin and Sue Burroughs, Nomadic Charitable Trust. I think this is fabulous. Which would have looked like in her heyday.